evening, everyone. Welcome, students, parents, and teachers. Today, I'll be talking about how laughter is often perceived to be one of the best medicines around. And I'll elaborate on this a bit on later. So first, let's talk about the inspiration that I had for doing this. When Ms. Maya first told us that we were given this TEDx opportunity, I kind of thought about it, and I wasn't really sure what I was going to do. So, here I created a diagram of some of the TEDx, uh, previous TEDx um, presenters that did it. And this was a student from her old school. His name was Richard Terreri. And he was actually an African child who was also raised there. And he adopted the traditional role of being a lion fighter. So what he had to do in his spare time was spend off lions, because um, unsurprisingly, Africans are scared, are scared of lions. So what he did was, as you guys know, in Africa, it's a developing country, and they don't have much supplies. And so what he did was he created an intricate system of lights that blinked off every time a lion was nearby. So the lions were scared, and they ran off. On the other side, here I was when I was 13. I don't know what I was doing. I think I was trying to get attention from girls. It didn't work out so well. I wonder why. So, when I first found out the theme, 21st century voices, I was actually kind of stunned. Because comparing, my, comparing myself to the likes of Richard Terreri, or even the students that we have here at school, I felt overshadowed because of the things that I couldn't do and the other things that people could do. So in doing this TEDx, I tried to take um, an orthodox approach to doing this. I wanted to show the world how small things can also make a difference. And you don't have to be interested in like, in great things and have to promote yourself and your ideas to feel good about yourself. You don't have to pretend to be someone who you're not. You just gotta be yourself. So that's what I'm essentially doing. So 21st Century Voices has allowed communication to evolve. If you think about it, when students were first at school, they were writing books, but now we're using computers. Information is traveling at a super fast pace, and now, in that same sense, achievements are also being accelerated. So for example, if you think about it, the accomplishments of Richard Ferrere, or um, some of even the students here, without the existence of YouTube or other forms of social media, we would never know about. Or even this whole TEDx experience, it wouldn't happen because the lack of social media is not there. But because it is, the way our voices, our ideas, and hence our achievements, they're accelerated and a lot of people will know about it. So I have to make the speech really good. Yeah, this is important. So, Questions like this come up to my mind when I think about it. What can I add to the world? If Richard Terrier in Africa is fighting off lions, what is William and Bamboo going to do? So I took another step back and thought about what's important to me, what are my hobbies, and how they can contribute to the world. So, what is important to William? Humor. I actually take pride and a lot of joy in making people laugh and it's just what I, what's important to me. So, before doing it, I thought about what actually made people laugh from my past experience, of course, and trying to offend people and people laugh at doing it. I thought about it and said, all right, what, what, what makes people laugh? So I concluded that the things that make people laugh most are things about, are subjects about People uh, are subjects that make people feel very uncomfortable or unsafe about. So that includes things like um, gender. Here, over here, it's not a toilet sign. The next, right next to it, you see a, a ton of religion. People like to laugh about religion. We shouldn't do it, but you know, it's funny sometimes. And I'll talk about it a bit later on. And then on the left, you see a picture of something that I love joking about, it's ethnicity. And then I also Googled ethnicity in Google, and this picture showed up, and it's ethnicity, but of course the Asian is left out. <laughs> so, there is an actual method to how I make people laugh. And this is also to my surprise, because I didn't know I was so smart and I was making people laugh on an actual theory, right? And it's, also, it's actually called the tension release theory. So Mark Twain said that humor is tragedy plus time. And when I first heard this, I was like, 
this this seems kind of wrong. I don't want to laugh at people who are like going through tragedy. But then I realized that is very funny. So this is what you call tension release theory. It's being able. Oh, sorry. It's about being able to talk about the different topics that has been passed around through time, and people are able to talk about it, and it actually becomes humorous. So what you do essentially as a comedian is you're setting up little trial balloons of what you think people would perceive as being funny. So when these trial balloons go up to your audience and your, your audience don't perceive it as something that's actually really funny, you can say the cliche line, I'm just kidding, it wasn't a joke. So how does it actually work? So on the left side, on the right, on the left side for you guys, you can see how humor is actually a process of being able to receive an emote of humor and laughter is created as a physical response within your brain and it's also an unconscious process and that's why you can often, you can perceive something as being funny but then you can't control the laughter. And to show that I put a lot of agents in one photo to compensate for the lack of the other. So how is it a, the best medicine in that sense? What are its health benefits? And then this is me trying to sound biologically gifted, right? So first, it increases blood flow. So um, of course I drew drag around being the artist that I am. This is a vein and then when, the, when your heart starts pumping because you're, you feel how funny something is and you start laughing, blood flow increases and then that gets rid, uh, get rid of things like cholesterol. Well, it doesn't get rid of it but that allows it to pass through. And then it also reduces level of stress hormones, which is very important because that catalyzes heart attacks. So yeah, you're welcome. And then it also enhances the immune system and the cardiovascular system, which is the heart. I'm making your heart stronger. And it also provides a workout for the muscles in the diaphragm and the abdomen and face. But this is not as important as its actual social benefits. Oh wait, hold on a second. I have to talk about this sort of thing. Um, this guy, I'm not the only person who's trying to actually promote the health, benef the health benefits of laughing and humor. It is actually um, a science that a lot of people are trying to do. And that's why people do things like laughter yoga. And it sounds kind of stupid, but there is a theory behind it. And people like normal co Norman Cousins, they're trying to prove it. So in this book, Anatomy of Illnesses, one of the things that he actually tried to do was he had a sickness with his spine and it, it started becoming inflamed. So what he would do to try and get better was go engaging himself in a three-hour laughing session. Yeah, it's kind of unorthodox, but he claims that it works, and it looks pretty happy to me in that photo. So maybe he has something. And now let's get to the social aspects of making of laughter and how that is in itself of the best medicine. So Charles Darwin says that it's a tickling of the mind, so the use of humor and laughing, of course. So the social benefits includes, of laughing includes being able to raise, uh, raise our spirits. And it, it eases the tension between the societies and people we were talking to. So this is particularly important when you're trying to solve problems or when you're in a fight someone or you're in, a, you're, in, you're in a dilemma. So what laughing humor does is it creates a psychological distance between your logic and your stress. So in that sense, you're able to think more clearly and make better decisions instead of rushing in a decision when you're mad. So it's also a fundamental necessity, and what I mean by this is that people perceive laughter as a good response, a friendly response. So imagine, imagine when you're meeting someone like that you already know for a long time, and and you think about what makes you connected to them. It's being, uh, it's about being friendly with each other. It's about feeling comfortable each, with each other. And how do you show that? Laugh. So in that sense, it's the most basic and fundamental form of communication because it doesn't need language that is like speaking English or trying to speak Chinese. It's about making people laugh and it's a, um, it's a natural response to show happiness. And it's also a cultural me mechanism and how I'm going to talk about this. For example, imagine yourself walking to a new country and then you meet a lot of people that you have no idea what their culture is about. And you look at them and then they look at you and then they don't know what you're saying. Right? So, but then imagine that same scenario but with people laughing. So a lot of the scientists believe that laughter is very contagious. 
So when you laugh, the other person laughs, and despite what you're actually really laughing about, you're showing that you feel com comfort and friendliness. So, I want you to think about this. Imagine a world without humor. Imagine a world without William. <laughs> yeah, you see, you wouldn't be doing that right now if I'm here. So, waking up, and then you have to go to school, you go to work, and there's absolutely no joy, then perhaps just money, which is actually not that bad either, but you can't laugh about it, right? So imagine that. Being able to laugh and have humor gives life color, and it makes you happy, and it makes other people feel happy, and is that not enough? Okay, so we get to uh, conclude in part. So uh, why does it matter if I can make a couple of people laugh? Well, the true intent of my TEDx speech is not to actually just exploit the benefits of laughing and the, the health benefits, social benefits. It, I'm trying to inspire you to inspire. Because when you walk out through that door and you're so impressed by the things that people in this room are able to do, I want you to know that don't feel overshadowed by the things that they're able to do. Because whatever interest is, it is not, it, there are no ideas that are worth sharing. And that's the model of, TED, and the model of TEDx. There are no ideas that you should feel so uncomfortable about that people will perceive it as being lame or people are going to think you're uncool. Everything is very cool. And it's not about how you're trying to promote it. It's about how much you're able to develop it. And what the 21st century allows us to do is research and trying to further your interest and making it to something that's important to everybody else and relevant to the world. And that's what you add to the world. So how I like to think about it is think about your interest as a little baby that you have. For the kids, I'm not trying to encourage you to have babies at a young age, but I'm just saying if you have a baby at a young age, you're trying to feed it with information. Like, so in a sense, you're feeding it. You're feeding it with information. And what the 21st century allows you to do is, in a sense, giving it a microphone. So when it cries, your interests are spread all over the world, and everybody can hear it. That's what the 21st century, a voice, uh, the 21st century allows us to do. Thank you very much.